So now at this point, coming back to that model that we had in place before, taking a look at how we want to have our sources speaking to our sub-questions and our sub-questions speaking to our inquiry question. Once we get all those sub-questions drafted out, we still need to th kind of think about like what kind of sources are we going to be looking at for in relation to our sub-questions. Because depending on the type of question that you're going to be asking, you might need some very different types of sources. Plus, there's always going to be the requirements of your assignment. So, for example, if I'm doing my, my research on the BP impacts on great blue herons, uh, I'm going to be asking all those different questions where I'm going to be looking for some different data sources where in some cases it's going to be government documents that are going to be telling me things about the policies and, and that kind of thing. Then I might be looking for some scientific articles that take a look at some of the impacts on wildlife and some scientific articles that talk about the habitat needs of great blue herons as well. So I have a, a bunch of different things that I might be looking for. I might even be looking for some engineering uh, documents that talk about how the mitigation happens in terms of uh, some environmental engineering uh, topics. And uh, so I'm going to be looking also in some places, I'm going to be looking for things that might be local government documents like Whatcom County based documents. Some uh, other instances, I might be looking for state documents like Washington state documents and then even federal documents as well that help to inform uh, where I might be going with this particular topic. It's important to keep in mind that these different sources will be speaking to those sub-questions in different ways. And you have uh, a couple different things that you might be pulling from in order to uh, accomplish what you need to. So a peer-reviewed source, uh, that, that's something where it has gone through a, a process that usually indicates that that information is going to be more reliable or is uh, more trustworthy in some way. So typically what happens with the peer review process is that somebody uh, who is either an expert or an emerging expert in a particular area will write an article, send it into an editor who will send it out to uh, peer reviewers, hopefully blind peer, peer reviewers, but in some, you know, different journals have different ways that they go about doing this. Uh, and they will basically indicate whether or not there's anything that needs to be fixed, whether the article should be accepted, whether the article should be accepted with revisions. And they provide that information to the editor who sends it back to the person who wrote it. And sometimes the this can be a process that can take a while depending on um, the, the journal and the article itself as well and before something actually gets published. So it's not like news sources where uh, something can get published you know, within hours or, uh, or days. It's going to take a little bit uh, uh, longer because it's going through a much more rigorous review process where different experts are making sure that what is coming through is going to be a little bit more reliable. Reliable. Now, this is not a perfect process, so that's something to keep in mind. There are bad peer-reviewed articles out there, so it's not um, totally perfect by any stretch of, of the imagination, but it is something that means that those sources tend to be a little bit better. Now, course readings, those can be good sources to be using because oftentimes they're on your topic and they're oftentimes uh, good scholarly sources. A primary source, now depending on the discipline you're in, you might be viewing primary sources uh, slightly differently. And what uh, the intention is here is that it's a the type of source that is like either raw data or information that comes directly from the source. So for example, uh, if I actually went out and conducted a study on the great blue herons uh, at uh, Cherry Point and actually observed some of their um, their habits and, and how they interact with their habitat, that would be primary source data because it would be data that I collected. But it could also in include other forms of data such as uh, something where it could be a, um, a, a news story that comes from a particular time period. It could be uh, testimonials that come from people who had an experience with something where they are uh, close to uh, the topic. So there's a, a number of different things that can be considered primary sources and it can, uh, again, vary depending on the, the discipline that you're talking about.